so um, everybody it's your boy here to give you guys your well a review freak out whatever you want to call it for the real housewives of atlanta so yeah i'm actually able to get the videos out i'm still trying to get adjusted <laughs> to my work schedule and everything only because like i don't know when i'm actually going to be camping for the most part i think Wednesday or Thursday, but I don't know how everything goes, but I have the opportunity to give y'all a video. It is damn 5.15 in the morning, so as soon as I'm done doing this, boot up marriage and medicine, do that. So, try to get through this as quickly as possible because we all know with the very first uh, episode, it's always just like a reintroduction to everybody. And I got coffee in here because, again, y'all see what time I'm up. It's probably, I'm hoping it's not going to be a long day, but it might be a long day. All right, so Candy is at uh, the OLG. Pretty much, um, you know, she tries to be at the restaurant as much as possible because, and I think she tries to have her mother and aunts there because, of course, OLG is those three, you know, so that's going to bring people in, not just the food. And if she's there, probably bring in more. And the day that they were shooting, like, it was like a long line, a 45-minute wait time. So good job for Candy. And, um... <laughs> and she also says that um, she, oh, well, Ty sits her down and asks her, like, is she tired? Because, of course, you know, she is a wife to him, a mother to um, Ace and uh, Riley. We didn't see Riley this episode. Hallelujah. She's also a businesswoman on many different fronts. Cause there's bedroom candy. Um and I'm pretty sure there's other things under the uh, Candy Code Entertainment, you know, Umbrella, now the OLG, and if I didn't already say so, getting back with Escape. So, you know, and her whole thing is that <laughs> she can't be tired, you know, but like she's not tired, she can't afford to be tired, you know, especially with his money to be made and all this other stuff. She just has to figure out how to balance all of this with being a mother. Because if you take the music career out of it, she could still do everything. But throwing that in there, it's going to make it difficult. And she even said, well, a little bit of time they have it is at the um, at the uh, restaurant. And she briefly talks about how last year was rough. People trying to bring it down. We all know that. So moving on. Cynthia Nini. So Nini, Cynthia is at her house. Uh, she, I didn't know she had turned 50. I totally fucking forgot. I thought she was like 45, but she pretty much said she's 50, single, and divorced. Uh, Nene comes over, stops by, and, you know, she pretty, she, as in Cynthia, pretty much says that, uh, she'll be celebrating another 50th because, um, her birthday was actually during the reunion. What a way to spend your fucking birthday. So she plans on having, like, um, celebrating her birthday all year, which ain't nothing wrong with that, but having another party called Fifty Shades of Cynthia, which is actually the title of uh, the episode. And the whole thing is because Cynthia wears a lot of wigs and because she is a model and all the other good jazz, she wants everyone to come dressed up as her. So I'm like, all right, cool, cool. I can see that. That's cool. That's cool. So... One second, y'all. <laughs> All right, so Nene brings up, uh, uh, not sure, brings up Kenya because she's trying to figure out, like, you know, since, since Cynthia is one of her closest friends, obviously she knows on them. And again, this is the first episode, so we got to try to sit here and grab everything and tie everything in immediately. So part of that is, uh, bringing up uh her you know eloping and everything and Cindy's like okay well they've been together for eight years you know like I don't believe it six months well I'm sorry eight months I don't believe it then uh Cindy said six months he's like again I don't believe it she's like well it at least has been four she was like so I'll go from eight to four to six and you can see that as much as I love Cynthia I really do you see her falling back into her normal pattern when it comes to Nene and it's going to be exhausting watching that shit this season. And Nene wants to know about it, wants to know about uh, the marriage and everything. And Cynthia's like, well, she's invited. She's on her way over, but she didn't tell either one. Now, let me just say this. For those of y'all who watch my Love of Hip Hop uh, New York review, 
you remember how I said that I'm not going to do the whole Remy and Papu's marriage thing all fucking season. How I said I'm not going to do the Yandy and Mendeecees thing. And if y'all remember back to Love Hip Hop Atlanta, when I said hell to the no, to the no, 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 with the uh, Rashida and uh, Kirk, I ain't going to do this shit with um, Kenya. I like Kenya. I'm not going to do this. Because it's almost like a whole Matt situation where the shit was drawn out. Now, Kenya comes in and pretty much said they elope. It is what the fuck it is. Because, and she did that. And also is referring to him as baby because she don't want everybody all up in the business. And Nene act like she don't understand, but I know she, I understand. Because it's just like, I'm on this show, yes. And now she is a wife. She is trying to keep her husband out of the bullshit and we not finna sit here and act like Greg they get did not get drug on this show. We not finna sit and act like Peter, even though you know Patricia brought a lot of them on himself. We ain't finna act like he ain't get drug. We not finna sit here and act like Todd didn't get drug. We not finna sit here and act like Apollo didn't get drug. I'm trying to see who the fuck else had a husband. That but what I'm getting at is we not gonna sit here and act like the men did not have jabs thrown at them. So she's trying to keep her man away from all of that. Now Okay, cool. It is what it is, but again, you can't you can't get married and not expect that to not some way somehow be your storyline, especially when it appears that Kenya doesn't have one. So with that being said, I'm not gonna talk too much about the whole Kenya situation. I'm not finna do it like unless she get into it with the girl. I ain't finna do it. I pretty much just summed all that shit up right there with her situation. And I ain't even watched the whole damn season yet. Moving on. <laughs> Kenya. Like I said, she confirms married, you know, been together eight months, all a good jazz, roughly. Calls him baby, married. That's it. I wrote that down because she had talked so far, but the whole confirmation of eight months thing. Moving on. So, Horsha has a podcast, invites over her sister and her cousin. And they're answering questions. And one was like, Do, like would you work with a friend? She said no. And she had talked about working with a friend in the past. I thought they were going to mention Candy because that shit went awry. But she was actually talking about Phaedra. Fake Dra. Forgot. That's her name. And even went so far as to say that Fake Dra has been reaching out to her. And she even says that she's closing herself off to new friends. That, you know, what she got is what she got. And, you know, the whole comforting of her sister this down third and I'm not sure if I did a fucking recap on the reunion but I ain't gonna talk about it but you gonna move the fuck on cause again we ain't finna be here all day I ain't finna sit here and where I'm gonna give y'all more than what the fuck I need to give y'all so Nene and Sheree meet up at Nene's boutique okay and this is one of those where I, I can appreciate Nene having a fallback plan because <laughs> especially what the fuck went on in recent weeks, she gonna need a fallback plan. And she gonna need another fallback plan to this one because people might not be trying to support ass after this. And Sheree says that hers was uh much more, I guess, lux- luxurious or whatnot. Um, look now. I don't remember her having the booty, so if y'all do give me the receipts in the, you know, comment section, but uh, you couldn't get she by Sheree off, you know, the ground so it's ain't really the part where you come in throwing shade you know what i'm saying it, whatever <laughs> now in the confessional sheree had this one wig where it looked like she had a motherfucking weenie dog sitting up it but then she had a second wig okay the second wig looked like nini wig okay from you know it pretty much looked like nini wig from what was it like two years ago that then you know Grew up, got older. Like, that's the wig that she looked like she had on. I was just like, why? I don't understand. I need for y'all to help me understand why. Because I don't understand why. Anyway, <laughs> look, y'all, like, it's fucked up that, like, we know her financial situation is struggle. Shit, mine's a struggle right now. And I'm sitting here trying to get adjusted to being in Europe. Okay, I'm just saying, but. I ain't even for do her like that. I'm gonna be nice. So they talk about the whole fake and uh you know Horsha situation, and you know Nene you know have pretty much said 
when it comes, like, first and foremost, Horsha wasn't no pawn. She knew what the fuck was going on, this, that, and third, so we ain't finna do that. And also, their little situation to where before she got kicked off the show, or before she left the show, how the fuck that shit happened, she told her on camera during reunion, like, look, you cannot be sitting here putting your hands on people, especially when somebody's fucking recording this shit, because that will tarnish your brand, this and third, pretty much be cautious of what you're doing, because it can fuck with your bottom line, which I think NeNe is watching this shit bad, like, damn, I probably should have not made that fucking rape Uber joke, because it's fuck with my bottom line right now, again, I'm tying, you know, trending topic shit together with this, and she doesn't, NeNe doesn't like the fact that on this nation, they're constantly bringing her up as a topic of conversation, I don't know if they do, because I don't fucking watch this nation, or listen to it, but that's her whole thing, that they're constantly bringing her up, so when she was on, when NeNe was on Watch What Happens Live, I didn't watch that, but apparently she was asked about the whole uh, fake truck and um, Horsha situation, and she pretty much said that Horsha needs to be fired for what she did, it was, you know, it was fucked up, point blank, and the fucking period. I don't see nothing wrong with that, but I think that also had, you know, sparks and things, and even, you know, when Horsha was having a little podcast, she even said that, I think she mentioned the fact that Nene had been, you know, talking shit, saying how she should be fired, this, that, and third, what the fuck ever, but I will say, if y'all peep game, this is Horsha's way of having something to sit here and argue with somebody about, you mad because somebody said that your ass need to be fired? For real, for real. Cause I think a lot of our asses said that your ass need to be fired. Actually, I wanted fake your ass and not be fired. Candy and everybody else use this whole season to drag the fuck. Skull drag both y'all asses. Y'all get to reunion, y'all get skull drug one more damn time, and then y'all get fired. But again, I don't get what I want here. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Now, when they, now, am I done with them? Check, I didn't, lost, oh, okay. Yeah, okay, I already said that. So, Sheree and uh, Horsha, they wig shopping for um, Cynthia's party. And Sheree is the only person that has been communicating with, uh, you know, Horsha since the reunion. Which, of course, she would be the only one on, because, again, bone carrier, all this other stuff. And making sure that she has alliances and people to film with. Because, again, for y- for those of you who do not know... If you do not have somebody to film with, you're not going to have a storyline. Because it was even said that had the girls did that to, what's her name? Kenya. Kenya would never be on the show. If they would have made it to where she was irrelevant and not a factor, even had she been there, but nobody talked to her. And, you know, the tea that's trending with Love & Hip Hop New York is from Mariah Lynn that people had in their contracts and shit. Did nobody want to film with Cisco? So because don't nobody want to film with you and you are not a strong enough person to have a storyline by your damn self, not to mention the bitch that he was trying to bring on, not not bitch, bitch, but y'all know the female that he was trying to bring on, she pretty much dogged his ass out because he wasn't going to pay her. But because nobody wanted to film with him and also that shit, he ain't going to be on the show. And that's why Monique said he's fired because nobody wants to film with you so you can't be on here. So, of course, Sheree needs to make sure that she has enough people that she can film with even if she falls out with them because she needs this check to keep the lights on. Okay. And then Sheree, what's it, Sheree? Yeah, Sheree had the audacity to have on this afro. That is afro, y'all. I don't, I don't know if y'all caught it, but that was a Baba Joy's wig. But that, that looked like some shit Mama Joyce had on back in the day. Back when Nene had that. You know what? Nope. Y'all real. You ain't finna do that one. Anyway, Sheree carries a bone from the conversation she had with Nene. And to bring that up. And, you know, again, whole, the whole thing is that she bring up the fact that she said that she wanted me fired. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah. That's that. And now we get to Cynthia's party. Go ahead and bring this shit all the way together. It, you know, why does Sheree look like her costume was on the... Bu- Here's the thing. If you finna sit here and try to present yourself to be this grand person, 
don't look like you're balling on the budget. Now, there is a way to ball on the budget where it doesn't look like you on the budget. Me, I'm basic as fuck. I don't give a fuck. I'm basic. I'm cool with being basic. But when I have to sit here and, you know, get all dressed up and shit, I clean up real the fuck nicely. But I don't sit here and present myself as, you know, I don't come on here, hair always. It ain't, it ain't a damn sense. It's really not. Because, again, this is me. I'm giving y'all who I am. I'm not. But I swear, it was just like, okay, let me get this cheap ass wig, throw this cap on, some shades. Okay, I'm going to grab this and this and this at the closet. Boom, done. I'm just saying, like, come, come, come on, Nasha Ray. Come on, Nasha Ray. I mean, even her, you know, ponytail, the little, you know, slick back. Even that shit looks struggle. Like, I, I'm going to need Nisha Ray to get together now. Okay. So, so, Cynthia had them walk down a makeshift catwalk to show off, you know, they stuff. And whoever had the best costume was going to win. Y'all, why the fuck did Bell fall out? Like, I was just like, Lord, Mel, come on now. I need for you to hold your liquor. Come on, Mel. You can't be fault. Come on now, Mel. Damn. Um, let me see. At one point, Horsha walks up, start hugging people. She hugs Candy. Candy was in professional. Like, I don't know why I allowed her to hug me. But at one point, they all, like, it was a group of them. And she had to walk away. Like, I can't just stand there and be fake and phony. She goes and talks with um, Nene. And then Sheree feels that, okay, let me go ahead and put these two together to force them to have a conversation at Cynthia's party. Now, part of me feels this party was probably production nudging her to do something. Because if y'all think about last season, first episode, how they nudged uh, Kenya to go ahead and have her um, housewarming prematurely. So I'm pretty sure that was fucking put on. And I'm pretty sure Cynthia's probably going to have a few more get togethers. But. Again, Sheree, like you sitting here doing some shit like that, trying to create drama for the show at somebody's party, but you don't want nobody going to your motherfucking basement at your motherfucking house. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm not saying, I'm just saying, but I digress. They get into it, Sheree, not Sheree, uh, Nini and Horsha, and the whole thing is Horsha only wants to address like, I'm gonna I'm use I'm use this sheet of paper. If this is the whole entire issue, she only wants to address this. Needy wants to address the whole thing, which I don't see an issue. That the only issue that I see is that wasn't the time or the place they could have taken that shit outside, away from the party. But I understand Needy's whole thing is if we're gonna talk about it, then let's talk about the whole fucking thing. Let's not just pick an isolated incident, and because again, that's gonna make Portia look good, and Portia even saying. Oh, it was just a whole back and forth. Dane gets in a resolve, and then fucking Nene left. That was it. That was all. I think there was something else that I wanted to fucking mention. I didn't write it down, but it was something that was in my head that I'm like, ah, I need to make sure I talk about it, and I can't think about it. Well, fuck it. That's it. This video went on longer than what I thought it would, so hey, y'all got a full review. There was a hell of a lot more to happen. I just didn't feel like talking about it, so that was the introduction. That's all I got, so thank you guys so much for watching. Let me say that if you got outside of Married to Medicine, you guys may not get Love and Hip Hop. You might. I don't know. If you don't, then you guys will see videos from me either right before Thanksgiving or in that time frame. Because by then, we should be done doing all this crazy shit. So that's all I got. Where you come, subscribe and share. I'll see you guys later. Peace.